Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the Darkest Timeline podcast, so you've got me for the day. I'm sure there'll be chats about games and movies and things like going to the gym, and I'm sure something from the past week. So here we go, this is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. <laughs> Let's get this party started. Holy shit balls. So, uh, it's Cookie. Uh, it's Cookie Cast. It's the Darkest Timeline podcast. Let's get something straight right off the bat. So, there was the point where we had like the hottest days ever. Um, covered that already. Then the sun stroke summer went away. Disappeared. Poof. Vanished. Bad weather. All sorts of stuff. Cooled down. Part of me that... Doesn't like being too warm. Doesn't like sweating profusely. So on and so forth. Wasn't bummed out by this. Um, I think I've come a long way from where I was many years ago. I, I hated everything about summer. Summer was just awful. Um, I suffer really badly with hay fever, which uh, kicks off my asthma. My asthma is very bad, so the two things go hand in hand. I was warm constantly, um, just just everything like that. I hated summer. Uh, fast forward many years later, it's like yeah, summer's okay. Yeah, you're too warm. Yeah, you can't sleep, etc., etc. However, there are nice things, you know. Um, Great for golf, great for going to the beach, which I like doing, things like that. So, out of nowhere, it's like, not very nice one day, and then all of a sudden you check the weather and it's like, hang on a minute, what What the hell? It says like, Friday's going to be hot as balls, 20 something, 26 degrees or something. Saturday's going to be 28 degrees. Sunday's going to be 28 degrees. Monday, it's bank holiday weekend, by the way. Um, so, no work for this guy. Oh, my God. So, the weather wasn't wrong. And I'm sure when the weather says it's going to be 28 degrees, in actual fact, it's usually like 30 plus. I know that I got in the car today to go and I had to go and get a drink I was like, oh, I'm dying. Um, had to go and get a drink. Got in the car, set off, and the car told me it was 32 degrees. Actually, no, before that, got in the car, put the air conditioning on full, and the air conditioning was like, nah, mate, it ain't working. It ain't happening. So I rolled both front windows down, and yeah, it was like, mm, yeah, that'll, that'll have to do. Uh, and then I looked and it was 32 degrees. It is hot as balls. No surprises, windows open. No surprises, I've got a drink and I'm really sorry with you, but you will have to put up with me drinking that drink because I don't think legally I can wear any less clothes and it is just, it's hot. So, Cookie cast. Darkest Timeline Podcast. You can tell that by the fact that I've been bitching and moaning already. Um, so, looking at my list, there is no bitching and moaning this week. Ooh. But, looking at the list, this list is long. So let's crack on, because the, the longer we're sitting here doing this, the longer I'm sweating out my eyes. Um... It's one of those things, I'm going to discuss it, but by the time you hear it, it'll be old news, and I imagine it'll be sorted by the time you hear this. Um, but this week, there's been this announcement that Spider-Man is leaving the MCU. Uh, I made a note of it, I thought, cool, let's talk about it. Weird thing is, so Spider-Man's leaving because Disney wanted a too big a chunk of the deal. Initially, I was like, oh, this is fucking Sony, they'll want too much money. And Disney would have told them to sod off and that would have been the end of it. Turns out it was actually the other way around. Disney only got 5% of the existing deal. 
Um, I think that was 5% of like the gross. So if a Spider-Man movie makes a billion dollars, they're only seeing 5% when it's a Marvel movie. You can kind of understand that's probably not ideal for them. Um, but it turns out they were like, we want half. Sony were like, no. The story then goes that Disney didn't count counter their no. They didn't come back with, well, we'll have 40% or anything like that. They just went, fine. Spider-Man, Tom Holland, all that are leaving the MCU. The speculation around Sony saying that... Or people are saying that Sony wants Spider-Man back to put him in the Venom movies. Weirdly, everybody says that Venom did really well. Which uh, is just a surprise to me. Because I didn't think it had done that well. I mean, it had terrible reviews. Um, I can say, having seen it a couple of times, it's certainly better than the reviews gave it. Um, but I can see a lot of where they're coming from. Also, there are the rumours that all the good stuff was cut out. Take from that what you are. Um, but they are doing a second one. Andy Serkis is directing the second one. And rumour has it that they want to put Spider-Man in with the Venom quote-unquote franchise. Last couple of days I've been seeing these videos pop up where people have been going, okay, so Sony and Disney have gone back to the negotiation table and have actually come to an agreement. The agreement is that Spider-Man will go back to Marvel for six movies. That's three standalone Spider-Man movies three Avengers movie with the option of a seventh movie and Disney will take 30%. No, Marvel will take 30%. But there's this thing about Marvel will finance but then only take 30% of the profits and then there's all this stuff about day one ticket sales and stuff that I get a bit lost in. So there's been a couple of videos out and about saying that this is a thing and they wanted to have it signed and sealed so they could announce it at the D23, which is Disney's convention. Um, however, videos I've seen today say that Tom Holland has been talking still about the fact that Spider-Man is leaving the MCU. So, not sure on that. It sounded like a bit of a done deal. Maybe they didn't get the paperwork signed in time. Maybe they didn't shake hands or what. Um, I'm sure by the time you hear this, it will all be done and dusted. And I'm sure Spider-Man will be back in the MCU. It, it doesn't really work for anybody, I don't think. Uh, and there's been a massive amount of outcry. I know Stan Lee's daughter's had something to say about it. A lot of the Marvel actors, Jeremy Rayner being one of the big ones, saying um, it's absolutely disgusting and you know they really should have come to a, an agreement. Um, a lot of people were using the... Martian slow and the bring him home thing. Um, so yeah, I'm sure by now you already know the outcome of this, but hey. It was something I saw, something I wanted to discuss. Moving on. Like I say, today's going to go quick because it's hot balls. I have watched three movies this week. We're already on to movies. How about that? I've watched three movies this week. Am I lying? Have I seen more than that? I'm in the process of watching two other films. I am lying. I've watched four this this week, but um, it's not going to come as any surprise that I've watched Shazam. We had people around uh, to talk about the upcoming NFL drafts, which I'll cover in a bit. Um, and we watched Shazam. Totally legally, of course. Um... I, I, I've seen that film multiple times at this point in time, and I love it. Um, as I've said before on previous podcasts, hands down better than a lot of the stuff that Marvel were churning out at that time. So, um, all of this has been in the gym, which kind of spoils the end of the podcast, but hey. Uh, I watched The Mechanic. Never seen it. One of those things, not... Not a huge Jason Statham fan, but I don't dislike him. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say I'm quite looking forward to seeing Hobbs and Shaw. Um, I think he he fit, fits that character quite well. Obviously, he's a British actor that did a lot of British movies, and then 
somehow got cast as a hard man, tough guy in a lot of American films. And I think that's the point where I tuned out a little bit. Um, but he's not somebody that I'm going to avoid a film if they're in. I just don't generally gravitate towards them. There's a few of his films that I'm like, okay, I might watch them at some point. And as it was, The Mechanic was on Netflix, which I can um, watch in the gym, which I've been doing. Very quickly, um, there was a guy in The Mechanic. So, I think, by the looks of things, his name is Ben Foster. So, this guy was one of those that seemed to have come out of nowhere um, and then was in absolutely everything. Just every film you saw, he was in it. And then, as quick as he'd appeared, he disappeared. Seemed to do a lot of westerns. Um, let's just have a look and see. Uh, da, 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 da. So, ooh, Robot Chicken, uh, the mechanic. What did he do before that? So, he was Angel in some of the X Men films. I think more than one. Uh, Three Ten to Yuma is one that I remember him distinctly being in. Um. Apparently he was in The Punisher, 2004 Punisher. Which one was that? Was that the... Who did he play in The Punisher? This is why I should do my research before I start a podcast, because I imagine this is riveting. Who did he play in The Punisher? Oh, he was in The Punisher. He was the guy, he was one of the flatmates, one of the guys that lived in the house. Of course he was. There you go. Um, he was in Phone Booth, apparently uncredited. Uh, anyway, he was a guy that appeared out of nowhere, this Ben Foster. So, things that stand out. Phone Booth, The Punisher, um, Hostage, Six Feet Under, X-Men Last Stand, 310 to Yuma, My Name is Earl, he was in two episodes of that, 30 Days of Night, uh, The Mechanic, which is the film that I watched, uh, Contraband, He's done one episode of Robot Chicken. Okay, nothing else is jumping out there. Oh, I thought I would have recognised more stuff. It felt like he was in like everything. Maybe if I go back a bit further, he'd have been in other stuff I recognised. So yeah, appeared out of nowhere, was in loads of stuff and disappeared as quickly as he'd been in stuff I, I know that there are some actors that are a bit like either they go off the boil or um, maybe they just for want of a better way of putting it make their money and they're, they're done with that you never know um, anyway the mechanic, Jason Statham is a hitman um, but he's like super professional he can make it look like an accident that's how he sort of that's how he makes his trade uh if it needs to look like an accident it will look like an accident um it starts with a with a guy in a swimming pool um donald sutherland um basically he ends up um killing somebody that he shouldn't because he's been lied to um ends up training the guy's son so on and so forth as far as fairly mindless action films go perfectly fine um definitely got me through a good couple of runs in the gym uh which is definitely what i'm looking for these days and yeah i enjoyed it uh, as far as i, I didn't hear it because i don't listen to the films that i watch in the gym i just have the subtitles on um seem to follow it well enough um and like i say i enjoyed it it was good whilst scrolling through netflix at that point in time, it was a bit of a, right, what's next? As I often do, flashed past something, was like, hmm, I've never seen that. This is basically the theme of things. If I haven't seen it, but it was a film that I maybe would have watched or whatever, um, that kind of get, that, you know, getting me through these runs is stuff that I haven't seen. So if I see something I've not seen, I'm like, probably going to watch that. So the one that I scrolled past and was like, 
Yeah, let's give that a try. It was 8 Mile, um, which is, for anybody that doesn't know, it's the Eminem movie. If I'm honest, my sister was a massive, I presume possibly still is, massive Eminem fan. And I know that she had a lot to say about the film, that she was quite disappointed in a lot of ways. Because the film's supposed to be partially autobiographical. Um, and you can see that it's, it is partially because, you know, he doesn't play uh, Marshall Mathers. Is that his real name? Um, he plays somebody called Jimmy. Um, it took me a little while to work out that the that the woman playing his mother was uh, Kim Basinger, Basinger, um, whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, she uh, she was very good in it. Honestly, as far as movies are concerned, I know she was in the um, Tim Burton's Batman, like the first Batman. Um, and I think I seem to remember seeing her in a film with A. Baldwin. I'm not sure if it was Alec. I don't think it was Alec. I think it was one of the other Baldwins. Other than that, I'm like, pfft, no idea of, of other films she's done. But always stood out to me as being in Tim Burton's Batman because I was a huge fan of Tim Burton's Batman. Um, she seemed to be very good in it. Again, I couldn't hear it. Um, Anthony Mackie as the quote-unquote bad guy. Um, a couple of other people I recognised for things. But there was a big, a big guy in it, and I was like, he's been in other stuff. Couldn't put my finger on it. Um, generally quite a good film. Obviously, it's sort of supposed to portray his rise. Um, I don't know how close to the truth it is. I think when my sister saw it, she seemed to say it was not all that close, but I don't know. Um, and her big criticism was that it only goes up to the point where he's sort of made a name for himself on this, what I guess is like an underground rap scene. Um, and I think in a in a film that's a little bit biographical, somebody who's that famous, you kind of want to know, you know, the you want to see the rise of their fame. However, it was good. It was enjoyable. Um, I'd certainly recommend it if you're a fan, even if you're not a fan, give it a go. Um, so that's that movie. Last night, sat down to watch, and this is one of those. Um, I think I mentioned before that I've I got a few films for my birthday, which was one of those. When am I going to get the time to watch that? To be fair, I have chipped away at them. I've got through all apart from one. And so we had the last one to watch, which was the film Bumblebee. Yes. Um, Transformers films have disappeared up their own asses. Um, at the end of the day, the best Transformers film is obviously the 1980s animated Transformers movie. Um, after that, the first Transformers film was hands down the best one. And it's basically been a steady decline since then. Interesting thing that I had heard was that Bumblebee was supposed to be one of the better Transformers films. Not directed by Michael Bay, which I think people sort of suggested that that might make it better. Drink time. So, a few things about this. One, um, my sort of review of it was, it was very watchable. Um, I mean, come on, once you've seen one Transforming Robot movie, you've probably seen most of them. I have this thing with these, like a disaster movie, where they keep showing you what the humans are up to. Godzilla, King of Monsters can fuck off, because that was the worst of all. Hey, these two massive monsters are about to fight, do you want to see it, or do you want to know what Eleven from Stranger Things is up to? Cool, let's check in on Eleven. Honestly, I mean, whoever thought that we were interested in the human element in a monster movie? Again, it suffered from that, you know. Hey, these robots are going to fight, so let's keep costs down by checking in on the human. The human is... Um, Haley. 
but why why do I do this? Haley Steinfield Steinfeld Steinfeld Haley Steinfeld um, for want of a better way of putting it the only way I know the only reason I know her is that she's in two of the three Pitch Perfect films that's right I said it Pitch Perfect um, seems to have lost quite a bit of weight um, not sure it suits her also pretty sure she was wearing a wig throughout it which was don't know um, yeah, Bumblebee, uh, it, it, it is what it is. It does what it says on the tin. John Cena was in it. Um, to give him his dues, he, he did manage to hold his own. Um, I've seen that he's got a film coming out soon, which, as I've said before, looks truly awful. He plays like a firefighter, one of these bush firefighters. Um, there's like him and his firefighter buddies have to look after a load of kids. And it's like, honestly, you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, I think he's trying to go down the route of The Rock. Uh, but he definitely doesn't have the pull or the charisma that The Rock does. Um, to give him his dues, he did seem to manage to hold his own. But he was in a transforming robot movie. So, there you go. Uh, like I say, very watchable. Um, that's about the best I can give you on that one. It wasn't a bad film. It was okay. Um, yeah, there you go. It was all right. Which I feel at the state of Transformers movies up to this point, that's probably a good review. Uh, right, games. So, you know me. You know how I love to play current games and how I love the fact that there are such uh, a high volume of current games out there. Um, so I give you a review of a game that's like brand new. Um, I have been playing The Witcher 3. As current as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, one of those uh, dark secrets that I have, that I never finished The Witcher 3 originally. Uh, because I loved the game so much, I was afraid to finish it. Turns out, what I thought was the end was nowhere near the end. It just felt like the end. Uh, Witch 3 is like one of those 100 hour games, 100 hour plus games. Uh, and I needed something to get my teeth into. So I was like, I'm going to put The Witcher on and I'm going to try and actually finish it. Which in some ways was a mistake. So, here's why. Um, up to the big battle. There's a big battle, if you didn't know. Because, uh, you know, it's such a it's such a current game. Um, up to the big battle, that game is great. It's fantastic. Storylines that are woven throughout it. The side missions. Various different missions that you do. Um, the choices you make. The outcomes from those choices. All great. Um... At points where you would just you know you have the opportunity to get bored, it switches it up and it gives you a, a really cool mission. One of my favourite missions in that entire game is the murder mystery, trying to work out who's killing people. Um, so after the big battle, there is a big battle. That game really drags its feet. It does the thing that hundred hour games have an issue when they often do it, by going, how do we drag this out further? And it just didn't need it. They could have brought that game to a very swift end after the big battle, which is what you would have kind of expected and kind of hoped for, and it would have been fine. Um, it really takes something away from that game. It really does. And it's such a shame because up to that point it's fantastic. But it is what it is. Um, thoroughly, it's a great game. It really is. Um, it just gets a little bit long in the tooth towards the back end. Um, I had The Witcher originally. Like I say, I never finished it originally. I did, however, trade it in to get the Game of the Year edition. One of the few times where I've actually traded something in and been better off 
for the deal. I'm sure I traded my copy in for like £15 and the Game of the Year edition was like £18. And I'm like, cool, you're telling me I get all the DLCs for this? Nice. So, I've got the two DLCs. The is it Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine. Um, I've started the Heart of Stone DLC. So far, does kick the game up a notch. Something that's interesting is on the loading screens for the Game of the Year edition, um, there's like, when you load the game, um, there's different pictures each time. Different Geralt's in different sort of positions. And what I noticed on a couple of them, he had these like additional scars on his face. And I was like, well, don't know what that is. I don't know where that came from. Um, found out, playing the beginning of the first DLC, this Heart of Stone DLC, the a character early on gives you these additional scars, which is kind of cool. So now I'm running around with these scars on my face. It's cool. Uh, like I say, the, this DLC has kicked this game up a notch. Um, so again, back to enjoying it, back to playing it. I mean, I, I can't honestly tell you how many hours will be in this game if you were to play the main game and play it properly, not just play the story, and the DLCs. You must be bordering on 200 hours. Excuse me, that's another thing you'll have to put up with for today, because, like I say, hot as balls. Um, I mean, it's one of those. I can't imagine any, any serious game I hasn't played The Witcher 3 at this point in time. Um, if you haven't, I recommend it. If you like a good, what would it be, RPG. Um, I know people have played it, like played it a bit and hated it. I know people have played it and loved it. You know, give it a whirl. It's a great game. When I'm saying that it gets long in the tooth, you can skip things. But then, are you missing the story? You know. Right, let me have a look. Uh... Right, so I've watched a couple of stand-ups this week. Um, so... Right, I've just had a notification there to say that the draft for the league is open. I don't think that's right. What the hell's going on there? Sorry, I've... I think making a change to the draft has made... Sorry, this is really, really bad, but um, something's happened to the draft. No idea what's going on here. Let me have a look. Play manager tools. Right, I know this is really bad. Um, the draft must be paused. How do I pause the draft? No. Right, I'm I'm sorry, this is I don't know what's going on here. Um I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to pause this. 
two seconds. Ah, you click unpause to unpause. Right, okay, so um, as always, the uh, NFL Fantasy app is utter fucking horseshit. Uh, I'm now going to, excuse me, I'm now going to get 50,000 messages going, what the fuck's going on? Um, apparently changing the time of the draft as decided as as the app has decided oh you want to do it today no i just wanted to change the time that was it fuck it i'll change it in an hour sorry i'll try and edit this out obviously i won't because that's effort what was i talking about right uh da, 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 da. so uh i watched i say i watched i kind of watched a couple of stand-ups um i was working from home one day and uh, you guys know me. I like a bit of something on in the background. I like stand up because um, it's kind of. My rule is put something on you've seen before so you don't get distracted by it. The issue was I've watched quite a bit of stand up recently. The, the old, what I call the old stuff. Um, ended up putting a couple of new ones on. Um, as it was, I wasn't distracted by them. However, what that did mean is that I didn't really watch them fully. So, I watched the Ellen um, stand-up. She's recently um, done a stand-up special. Um, and... I'd, I'd seen a trailer for it, and I was like, you know, if the trailer makes you laugh, maybe it's worth giving it a watch. Um, the trailer made me smirk. I honestly didn't know what it might be like. Um, so I was a bit like... <sighs> People don't read messages. Sorry, this is a terrible podcast, as Dan Harmon would say. Um, yeah, the the trailer made me smirk. I was like, let's give it a go. Uh, you know, if it's bad, turn it off. That's always the rule. It, from what I saw, it was all right. Um, you know, it was a woman who is worth many, 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 many millions and millions and millions of dollars talking, um, trying to still be relatable, but that was the joke um, which ran through it, which was, you know, it was okay. Um, I think it's one that I should probably go back and watch again and watch it properly, watch it fully. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I can say about that. I can't give you a full review because, like I say, I didn't, overly watch it properly but from what i saw it was entertaining um i wasn't rolling around the floor laughing but like i say wasn't watching it fully a terrible review um which is following on to this other terrible review i watch um marlon wayne's stand-up which is woke ish um the Waynes brothers are very hit and miss, uh, mostly in the movies. Literally, at the at the time I was going about, I was sort of thinking, yeah, I might watch this. There's been some film, there's like a trailer for a film on Netflix that I think is Marlon Waynes, and it looks horrendous. Like, sex tuplets or something, it looks awful. Um, and I think that's kind of the problem... The Waynes brothers generally seem to not have much of a care around what they do. Good, bad, indifferent, I don't think they really care. As I presume as long as there's a paycheck at the end of it, which is unfortunate for the rest of us. Um, again, didn't fully watch the stand-up. And again... What I did see was very watchable, um, quite enjoyable. Um, he was sweating buckets. Uh, that was largely to do with running around and for half of it he was wearing a jacket. Um, again, probably watch it again, give it a better review. Watching it again and actually sitting down to watch it. I felt these both were stand-ups that I could put on that I didn't need to fully watch because I wasn't... 100% interested in them but interested enough to put them on and that's what I did um, 
so yeah a couple of standouts i mean this week's podcast although i'm rattling through it this week has literally got absolutely everything that i um that i talk about so um yeah there is this thing here this isn't me bitching and moaning but it is uh it is one of them a toothache again and like when i get backache i'm like really this again i honestly hoped that having the wisdom tooth out would have given me some leeway on this whole tooth thing um but the broken tooth has been giving me jip shocker a broken tooth giving me issues um i'm kind of i'm obviously i'm kind of hoping to avoid going to the dentist if i'm honest i don't think that's going to be an option um as Leanne said to me, it got that bad that I ended up having to take painkillers after the first day, which, as I'm sure you'll know by now, me and painkillers are not a thing. It has to be bad if I'm taking painkillers. So it was that bad. I took painkillers for a day just to keep the pain at bay. Um, so, but yeah, very much like the last time I had toothache, the pain started in the tooth, you know, toothache. But it didn't stay there. So we're on to like day three or four of toothache now. So day one, pain in tooth, toothache. So after a day it got that bad, I was like, I'm going to have to take some painkillers. This is unbearable. Obviously, like I mentioned before, this is bank holiday weekend. So, you know, pain starts on Friday, takes you through into Saturday not getting a dentist appointment on a Saturday. Um, takes you in Sunday, uh, not getting a dentist appointment on a Sunday, and oh yeah, bank holiday Monday. I presume dentists aren't open on a bank holiday Monday. So, just had to model through. The biggest issue that I've had is literally, I'm just not sleeping. It is keeping me awake. You know that sort of like, even when you fall asleep, you're kind of still awake. All the way through the night, I'm tossing, I'm turning. I can't lie on one side because that's where the pain is. I can't lie on the other side because that seems to make the pain worse. So, we've had this thing where, like I said, pain in tooth. Next thing, pain in gum. Okay, so, you know, makes sense, logic. Um, don't eat on that side of my face, all the usual tricks and things like that. Over the last day, day and a half, the pain has moved into the roof of my mouth, which it did with the wisdom tooth and then turned into an abscess, which was horrible, which ended up being the reason they took the wisdom tooth out. So it was like all the way across one side of the roof of my mouth. And if I like pushed the roof of my mouth, it either made it better or worse. Um, at various points, I had to take painkillers. Um, last night, I had to get up in the middle of the night to take painkillers. Uh, by that point, I was beside myself. I haven't slept for like three days. Um, just awful. Um, interesting point, a baby's cry uh, and toothache go together real well like super well it's like it's like that sound that penetrates right to the very core of the pain <sighs> um so over the last sort of day and a half the pain's moved into the roof of my mouth and then literally this afternoon the pain has pretty much gone from the roof of my mouth into my tongue so there's like a spot, which is like the bit of the tongue that would be next to the tooth, where the toothache started. That is holding 60-70% of the pain. The rest is still in the roof of my mouth. Yeah. Discovered something, which is interesting. Cold, like frozen cold, actually seems to make it better. So I've started like, when I went to get a drink, I had to get like a frosty drink. That seem to really help 
So a bit later on, I had an ice pop, and again, that seemed to have really helped. I remember somebody saying when I had the, the pain in the wisdom tooth, and I said I'd put a hot water bottle on it, and they were like, oh my god, don't do that. If it's like an infection, heat makes it worse. So in theory, if it's something like that, cold makes it better. Um, and I can say at this point in time, cold has made this pain... It's weird. Like I say, right now it's in my tongue. So that's toothache in my tongue. Go figure. So, um, that's toothache. I'll I'll make a decision tomorrow because obviously I presume the dentist will be open. Um, it's not, it won't, you know, it's not bank holiday anymore. If the pain keeps me up tonight, obviously I can't keep not sleeping. I'm going back to work tomorrow after a long weekend. Um, if I go to work, oh, the other thing being is that, uh, as you can imagine, having not really slept for three days, my mood is amazing. Um, and that, that's something that I'm not really going to be able to take to work with me. Um, we'll have to see. There might be a phone call to a dentist. I believe rather than fixing the broken tooth, the dentist will do the usual and go, oh, we need to take it out. And if that's the case, I will lose my shit. Because, like the wisdom tooth issue, this issue will also have been caused by the dentist. I'm not bitching, though. Um, as you will have heard, uh, and the issues that I'm having here with this uh, NFL thing, it's nearly NFL season. Obviously, I'm not going to cover NFL stuff on this podcast, because <laughs> I do an NFL podcast. Um, but... This afternoon, I had a bit of downtime, uh, trying to get through toothache, sort of distract myself from toothache. Um, so I sat and did a mock draft for the NFL. Um, I mean, drafts in the NFL, like the fantasy stuff, it's a real mixed bag of frogs because there's a lot of just pick a fucking player. People that let the time run down. Half of this draft ended up going to auto-pick because nobody was picking players. Um, and the other half, it's like, dude, you, you know which player you want, just pick the player. Why do you need to take a minute and a half to decide? Um, certainly gave me an idea around what it's going to be like when we've got uh, Matthew takes all the time, two T's hurley he drafted. But on the flip side... It was a really good mock draft. Really good. Honestly, if I could draft that team, 12-man team, 12 man mock draft, and I managed to draft an amazing team, which surely means I'm going to end up with a bag of shit when I do a proper draft. Um, yeah, short version is it's like reignited the fire in me for NFL. And for drafting and for fantasy and for all that. Uh, we had people over uh, on Saturday and we watched a load of games. Uh, watched a movie, watched Shazam. Um, but yeah, we watched a load of games, making the use of the Game Pass. And yeah, I'm just, I am so ready for this season. Um, I love football season. I love everything about it. I love talking the talk. I love picking up the players, I love doing the drafts, doing the fantasy stuff, watching the games. Um, yeah, just lots and lots of fun. And all the merchandise. I do love me a bit of merchandise. Going to enjoy wearing my new hat. Uh, and I've got a new jersey that I haven't worn yet. Uh, I got it in the off-season, and the off-season is summer. So, yeah, not jersey weather. So I'm really looking forward to wearing my new jersey. And getting back on the uh, quest to have a jersey for every team. Um, so yeah, that's just one of those. Like I say, I'm not going to talk about it loads because this isn't the forum. Because I have another forum for it. Um, something that's at the top of my list. Uh, I've been coding podcasts left, right and centre. Still haven't come across the one where I presumably talk about cutting my hair off. Starting to get a bit freaked out now. Presume it's coming up. I've still got a bit of a backlog and I'm trying to um, sort that aspect out. I'm going to do a week of releasing podcasts just to bring the backlog down 
Oh, I mean, it's terrible. First of all, problems and all. Um, if I do another couple and I don't hear about it, I will talk about cutting my hair off. But until then, I'll keep listening out for when I do. So I can take it off my list more than anything. Uh, like I said, I am rattling through this. It's hot as balls in this room. I've had to close the door, so I'm getting no through draft. And I presume at this point in time, it'll have, it'll have dropped a couple of degrees, but it's still probably 26 degrees or something. I'm surprised the laptop's keeping up with it. Um, so, as I like to do at the end of a podcast, that's right, short one today because I'm rattling through it. Um, I'm going to give you an update on the gym. Day is it today? It's Monday. It's always Monday. Not true, but, you know, usually Monday. Um... So, last night, went to the gym, had my cheat meal yesterday. Um, I think I was ready for a cheat meal, but I always feel a bit, I always feel a bit bad, because, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope, but apparently not, because it's fairly easy to get back on the train. Um, So, the cheat meal thing's quite useful. Had my cheat meal, went to the gym. And it was awful. Honestly. I did a load of weight. Which was fine. You know. Um, I am feeling like I miss. Proper workouts. But as I keep saying. It's all about the running. It's all about the running. It's all about the running. Um, I've lost I've lost weight. Um, all in all. Up and down. I've lost a stone. Um... Obviously, I had my cheat meal yesterday where I weighed myself yesterday. I'd lost two more pounds. Um, but then I weighed myself today and I've put that back on. It's the curse of the cheat meal. Hopefully, it'll uh, re-engage the weight loss. So, over the next week or so, I can get a few more pounds. So, I've lost a stone. Um, but when you're training and losing weight, obviously, there's the whole muscle weighs more. Um I can see my body shape has changed, um, not enough, that's why we keep doing it, a few items of clothes fit a little better, which is nice, Um, I need to try and see if my other shorts fit, because they were close the last time I checked, I'm kind of hoping that I've lost enough to get back into those, because I've only got one pair of shorts at the moment, and as I I might have mentioned, it's hot as balls. so yeah, when last night I did some weights, did some running. Um, basically, the short version is I'm going to the gym every day, apart from on a Tuesday stroke Wednesday, depending when we do the football podcast. I take that as a rest day. And then what generally happens is quite organically, another day of the week ends up naturally being a rest day. So I'm going to the gym five times a week running uh when i go this evening i'll be up in my run again have a horrible feeling that that'll look something like 20 minutes of solid running um the issue with going at night to the gym is they don't put the air conditioning on like full air conditioning on so it's last night i was sweating out of places i didn't know i could sweat from and that just makes it awful um but presume that means i'm losing more losing more weight i don't know um it's been good it's been good to sort of keep going um i'm quite into this low carb diet i don't want to say the keto diet because i I don't know whether that's necessarily true i'm just calling it low carb um and i generally cut carbs out pretty much everywhere i can um i'm just Fingers crossed it's going to be, it's going to keep going the direction it's going. The weight's going down, the body shape's changing, the running's getting longer. Um, I'm I'm training, like I've said to a few people, I, from now on I always want to be training for something. At this point in time I am training for something, but I'm not really going to go into what that is at the moment. Um, and I'm just going to keep, keep going to the gym, keep training, and... Unfortunately for you guys, keep updating you with my progress. Um, biggest goal 
is to get back to proper workouts. Uh, and by that, I mean lifting weights, doing heavier weights and stuff. Um, but I cannot do that until I've shifted this weight. Um, and I don't mean all of it. I just mean a lot of it. Um, get the weight down, get back to working out properly. Um, but as I've said to you guys, and I've said to a few people, keep that running going um, and just keep training for stuff. Always be training for something is the new motto. So yeah, there we go. That is a very quick this week um, cookie cast darkest timeline podcast. Um, getting back to having guests on the podcast. Did a wonderful podcast with uh, Donna Davies the other day. Um, always, always enjoy having Donna on. Uh, I've got, I've scheduled a big podcast with a few people and we'll be kicking off the NFL podcast we've got the football podcast we've got the NFL we've got the monthly wrestling podcast all of that sort of stuff going on but I am getting back to to getting guests to come on and, and talk about stuff which is cool I enjoy that so there we go very quick and condensed version of a podcast I'm going to go and open that door so that I don't melt. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say bye. I'll see you guys later. Sorry about all the stuff in the middle. Um, but, you know, being a commissioner is a tough job. Bye. So there you go. What do you think of that? Another one in the back. Another week gone. Another week closer to whatever it is you're looking forward to. YouTube watchers, make sure you're YouTube subscribers. Check us out on the YouTube and uh, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Everybody jump over to thecookiecast.com, check us out over there, send us some social media love, drop us an email, all that fun stuff. So there we go, another one done, another week gone. Until next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Bye.